In this video, I got another recycle shop find. This is a 40 inch insignia uh, with the Roku built in. It's an LED TV. It's only a couple of years old and it is completely dead and unresponsive. I get no power lights uh, and I did the flashlight check and I got no image. It appears to have uh, just no power coming into it. So I'm gonna tear off the back and take a look at the power supply. So I am getting the line voltage up to this capacitor, 161 volts. So the AC is coming in, it's getting rectified, and we have the 160 uh, DC sitting here. But I'm not getting any DC output on the secondary low voltage side. I'm not getting 3.3, which should be should be right here. I'm getting zero, and I should be getting 12 volts when turned on when here, and it doesn't matter if the switch is hit or not. So. We have high voltage AC coming in, but nothing coming out. So I'm going to pull off that power supply and take a closer look. So to confirm that it was uh, just the power board failure and not the main board or problems with the LEDs, I'm just running the TV off of the bench power supplies. Here we have the 12 volt rail uh, where it's drawing about 830 milliamps. It also gets its 3 volt rail from the 12 volt rail. Over here in the 30 volt side, we are running the uh, the higher voltage rail, which now it's set to 30 and it's drawing uh, 800 milliamps right now in the darker setting. That's a little misleading because I'm actually running a buck uh, step up buck converter to bump it up to a little over 40 and even that's a little too low. But here we're seeing uh, about 800 milliamp draw on the lowest setting and on the max brightness, which is brighter. We're drawing one and a half. Stop eating the TV. We're drawing one and a half amps. So that uh, just to just says uh, just to confirm that we just need a new power supply. All right. In order to fix this power supply, we have to understand this power supply. So here I just made a, a simple block diagram showing the. The main important components. Now the heart of this power supply is a LD5760. It is an 8-pin chip found under the main MOSFET heatsink here. It's a 7-pin SOP 7-pin. Uh, so what we have, we have the AC socket. Got the AC coming in, going through a fuse to a full bridge way of rectifier, which then goes to this main 400 volt smoothing cap positive side of the cap is tied directly to one of the primary coil windings and out the other end is pulled to ground by this MOSFET. Uh, it passes through a little inductor which is hiding under here uh, to the coil. It is uh, tied to the negative of the main negative of the capacitor through a 0.24 ohm resistor so that might be a, a point to check if something goes bad. Uh, so, yeah, the LD5760 is driving the MOSFET. There's some feedback stuff involved. <clears throat> that makes up the main primary side. The secondary side, it's a pretty simple power supply. It has three main voltage rails. Uh, it's it's an offset center tap transformer, I guess you could say. It's got a high voltage winding and a low voltage winding. On the low side, we just go through a diode, through some smoothing capacitors. These guys here, uh, 470 microfarads. This makes up the 12 volt power supply section. Now there is a transistor here. Uh, I'm not that might be might be regulation of some form, or it could just be controlled to turn off and on the 12 volt. I didn't look too close into that, but we're also tied into a 3.3 volt. I, I believe this is another. Another 8-pin chip, which I believe is a voltage regulator for the 3.3 volt rail. And then on the high voltage, it uh, passes through these three diodes. Here's some more smoothing capacitors, 63 volt smoothing capacitors. And then at this point, you should be getting around 40 to 50 volts at these 63 volt caps. And then there is a, another MOSFET inductor and diode tied into it, this 200 volt cap. Now this section here bumps up the 40 to 60 volts to about 77 volts. Well, of course, it depends on what the backlight is set to, but up to 77 volts. 
And here is another SOP8 chip, which I believe is either in charge of dimming or switching on and off. Um, so this, this circuit here is what makes the final voltage for the LED driver. Now, with this power supply, what I was getting was uh, AC coming in, power at the MOSFET, and it was switching. I was getting the uh, pulse width modulation signal out of the chip to the MOSFET. Everything is fine, but the secondary side was just completely dead as a doorknob, acting like it wasn't getting any power. When I tested it, I was just injecting 12 volts here after the diode and then it made up, it regulated itself to 3.3 to drive the 3.3 volt rail, 12 volts came out of the 12 volts and then I also had to inject a secondary higher voltage uh, which I put uh, after these diodes here. Um, my power supply only goes up to 30 volts, this is where I use a little box step up board to get me 40 at these capacitors which still probably was a little on the low end but this circuit here of course bumped it up to what it needed to be to run. Um, so that lead me to suspect the transformer. So if we take some measurements, now a good switching transformer uh, coil should be very low ohms. You know, I'd expect under an ohm for a good coil. Let's see if I can get this in a shot. Yeah, it looks good. So if we start with the secondary windings, now we know uh, top pin here, and then we have the center tap here. Okay, point, point 0.2, which of course the meter leads themselves is about point 0.2, so it's a complete circuit. There's no break in that wire. And then, let's see here, so then we can actually go from here to here. And there's our also zero ohms and zero ohms. So these coils here are still complete. On the primary side, we just have one main winding, which is a top pin. Pin two is not there, not connected. It's just an empty slot. And then pin three. And we have nothing. So <clears throat> look at that. It's not even not even registering. It's, it's completely open. But if get close in here. If I touch the wire itself that's wrapped around, we, we start to get some readings. See? Look at that. That's what I'd expect right there. So all it is is the dang solder joint on the pin between the wire coming out of the transformer. It's wrapped around the pin, but it's just soldered poorly. It looks like there's some kind of epoxy they put on there, but didn't seem to fix it. Now after reflowing that bad solder joint, let's see what we're getting for a reading. Look at that, half an ohm. Yeah, now we have a good connection. I right, just got to put it back in. Transformer's back on. Let's power it up. Okay. Let's see if there's any 12 volt or 3 volt. Oh no, that's not enough. Let's see if we have 3.3. Should be this pin right here. We have 3.3. That's a good sign. It actually has life. Woohoo! All right, so I got the TV all put back together. Now for some testing, and I'm going to take some power measurements to see some power draws on this thing. So since it's a smart TV and it never really shuts off. 
It always consumes about 11 watts just being plugged in. So let's uh, power it up. I did notice that it has active backlighting. When we go to a dark screen, the power consumption goes way down. It's actually dimming the backlighting, which is kind of a nice, nice feature. Oh, first, let's play with uh, backlight. Let's see here, system. So right now we're on maximum backlight. We're drawing uh, 50 watts. Although since this is on a dark image, I might actually change a little bit. So on the lowest setting we're drawing, 34 watts. On the next one up dark, 38 watts. On normal, 42 and a half watts, bright. 47 watts, and the brightest, 50. All right, well, let's do some streaming with it and see what power consumption is. All right, so it seems that it never really goes over 60 watts. That seems to be its max power consumption with the backlight turned all the way up with it streaming through the Wi-Fi. Well, that wraps up this video. Thanks for watching.